Hey guys, I'm back and we have a long day ahead. Um, as you already know, we're doing a repot and chat today. I do not have a specific chat topic, but I did open up my Instagram questions to just any questions. Um, so I have plant questions, personal questions, some spicy questions, and I'm just going to get through as many as I can. I won't be able to answer them all, but we will get through most of them hopefully because I have a lot. I have, I'm, I'm being ambitious today, maybe too ambitious. Yesterday, well, over the last week, I have been just swirling around the apartment, um, purging plants, rehabbing plants, taking care of plants, and just kind of like getting back into the swing of just like full-time plant care because truly I have really just been doing the bare minimum to get by because I've been so busy and there were a few that stood out to me that were like we've got to we've got to get things under control so um it's kind it's a it's going to be a very labor intensive repot I wouldn't even doubt if I was here for the next four or five hours Obviously, I'm not going to post all the footage, but um, all that to say, I've got a lot of work to do. So I should be able to answer a lot of questions, but again, not all. As usual with these repot and chats, I'm just going to be showing you guys the roster, um, let you know who's going to be repotted today and why before things get really messy. So where do I even start? There, literally, it's scattered all around me. There is no kind of order. To this plant room right now i'm not even gonna pretend like i'm gonna keep things clean it is gonna be a disaster in here in a few hours so let me just uh grab the first one here is my philodendron rubro ru ru rubra rubro rubro juvenile is that what it's called Philodendron Rupert Juvenile El Choco Red. Freaking names are always changing and I can't keep up. I don't know if she's wanting to crawl or if this stem is just not supporting itself. Because it used to be like this, but look at the leaves. So I have taken it as an opportunity to do exactly what I did with my Philodendron El Guapo, which you might be able to see, this guy right here. And I'm going to do the same thing and pot him in a, a horizontal box from Muji so that I can just have it growing forward. Um, hopefully it works out, but uh, yeah, this one's going to be, this one's going to be interesting. Next one is this Monstera Elbow. I um, was supposed to be giving this back to my friend who I had been growing all of these um, elbows for. Not only did I not give it back, but I came home from her house with like five more elbows. So we are back where we started. I'm gonna be rooting and tooting a whole bunch of elbows again. And I'm kind of inclined to keep this one. I don't know why, like this isn't even the prettiest of all of the props that I had. There were way more that I would have loved to keep, but I kind of, after propping all of these monsteras or all these elbows, I was kind of over it. I was like, eh, I don't, I don't think I really need one. This one literally has like so much thrift damage, which I kept on because I wanted to show it in a video. But something, something is telling me that this year I need to just baby one, one of them, get it on pole, and just see how much I can size it up because I think. I think I might feel differently like once it starts maturing and I might feel like, okay, yeah, I want an elbow in my collection. Not quite there yet, but we're gonna get the process started. If I end up really not falling in love with it, then it can go back to her or we can sell it. But yeah, today is the day because <laughs> the potting situation is not ideal at all. It's in very algae ridden, perlite and the moss up top is so old and gross like just just is that third on the roster is this philodendron glad hands which is such a cool plant this one i had been wanting for a while i haven't shown it that much on this on this channel and that's because it's kind of just been like rooting and not rehabbing but just kind of getting established as a real plant um, some of these roots are really dark. I don't know if it's starting to rot or if it's just like brown algae, but we're gonna figure out what's going on with it. But it's actually like growing pretty well even without a pole. Um, the leaves are not, they're not getting any bigger. 
they are getting a little bit smaller but they're at least keeping such a like cute shape so i just want to take an opportunity finally to get it on a pole and or at least like a bamboo stick some kind of support so that the leaves can keep maturing another one are these two philodendron dean mcdowells you can see they're both just in like sort of temporary cups but i'm thinking about potting them together because they look so cute as a couple like i almost feel like they're like a puzzle like look at how perfectly they just fit together but the thing is is am i gonna regret it is it gonna be too much once the leaves start getting a lot bigger but the thing is, is I don't necessarily need two Dean McDowells. But I don't want to only have one. So I don't know. Um, I'm either going to pop these separately or pop them together. But just going off of my gut, I really, really want to pop them together. This one might be a surprise, but my Ripsella cell cornioids, it's doing well. It's pushing out a lot of new growth. You guys can kind of see like the light green growth at the top but it is shedding so much like so many of these little thingies are falling off and just like it's not it's not like the normal habit for this plant like you can there's there is all over my lap i don't really know what the deal is with that but i feel like this soil is not retaining a lot of moisture anymore because it dries out so fast. So I kind of want to see what's going on with the roots. I want to give it some fresh soil since it's been a few years. <laughs> They're going everywhere. And I actually think I want to split this in half and only keep half because it's kind of a large plant. And if I had a house, 100%, I would give the space for this. But right now it's kind of just squeezed onto a windowsill. So I, yeah, I might just separate it, keep half of it, and then sell the other half. Might regret it, but that's where we are right now. There's like, whoa, there's like a million of these all over the floor. And then the last one that I'm going to be repotting and actually chopping today is my Monstera Escaletto. Um, it actually put, it pushed out a runner for the first time. You guys can see there's no leaf on this node right here and it happened when it ran out of pole. Actually, it ran twice. There's no leaves on these two nodes, but it is pushing out a leaf up here. The leaves have significantly sized down. I just have honestly been neglecting this a lot, but the good thing is, is that Fernie Fern posted on her story that she had been wanting an Escaletto so I am gonna be chopping this sucker and sending her a cutting. Um, I wanna give her a rooted cutting. I don't wanna give her something that she already, or that she needs to root. So I don't know, I'm kind of thinking I'll give her like a leaf like this, like a big one, because they grow so fast. I'm not worried about like, oh, I need the biggest leaf. Like this thing sized up like a motherfucker. Like I, it surprised me. So I just want her to be like excited when she opens up her her box and like be able to enjoy like what a mature leaf looks like. So I'm going to be unpotting and chopping this today and I don't know, I'm going to ship it. I'm not going to ship it till next week though because it's freaking cold here. And I will be chopping one more surprise plant. She doesn't know that I'm going to be sending it to her. She doesn't, I don't even know if she wants it, but when I look this at this plant, I just think Fern needs this in her collection. I just feel it. Um, I won't show you guys what it is. I'll wait till she shows you, if she's ready to show you, if she ever shows you, which I'm sure she will. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I hope it makes it there. Wow, we are, there's dirt everywhere. Okay. All right, so, oh, this is not an ad, by the way. It was just placed very perfectly in the frame. I can actually even see the background because my vision is so bad, even with contacts on. But now that I've shown you everyone that's on the roster for today, I'm gonna get set up here and we're just, we're gonna get right into it. I've got a chai today, so I actually went for a run for the first time in like nine, 10 years. I ran a full marathon in 2013, December of 2013. If you don't know how long a full marathon is, it's 20 point, 26.2 miles and this is kilometers i don't know what it is in kilometers but it's a it's a freaking long way okay 
and I actually really really I really enjoyed running while I was training I found it to be way more therapeutic than I than I thought it was gonna be and I feel like at the time my mental health was so good because I was just yeah I was like really active always had like endorphins going and I just took really good care of myself like my body but then but then that fateful day it was just a horrible time it I just I, I did not have fun I did not enjoy it I mean there's something about like the energy of being at a marathon that's like really really like amazing but it was so cold I pulled a muscle at mile two I like busted my toe it, it was just not I, I was not having it and there were like a few times that I wanted to quit and I like really almost gave up but I didn't and I did it very slowly but safe to say after that day I just did not work out ever again never stepped foot canceled my gym membership put my shoes away like did not work out once after that day I'm sorry babe I'm working you can't come in here I'm just gonna be a few hours and then we'll go cuddle. He doesn't understand a word I said. So who, who should we do first? Who's gonna be the easiest? None of them are easy to be honest. I'm telling you, this is a very, very labor intensive. Okay, let's just start with, I guess, the El Choco Red. I think I really am gonna get a cart I'm either gonna get a cart, one of those like IKEA carts to keep all my stuff in so that I can just like have everything with me, or I'm gonna get one of those carts and I showed it on my vlog. I'm gonna get one of those carts that like are for the kitchen and it's got like shelves underneath and like a wood top so that I can film and work on the wood top but then have all of my stuff underneath me. Cause this is this is not this is not ideal. I'm just using my shelf back here. Um so let's just get right into these questions. I am just gonna answer them in the order that I wrote them down here. And there's like two pages of this. So first question is, uh, what were your first plants? My first plant, like my first plant was, it was a succulent, I remember that. So it was actually my, ex-boyfriend who got me into plants. I was with him in the years 2012, like 2000, 2011, 2012, 2012, 2013. I can't remember. I think it was 2012 to 2013 that I was with him. And he, I wouldn't say that he was into plants, but he knew about plants because of his mom. And Sorry. This is the reason I didn't redo my manicure because I knew it was gonna get busted as hell today. So yeah, like I said, his mom was into plants and she had a, like a huge succulent garden and um, I thought it was the cutest thing ever. And my ex-boyfriend, he would make these little like succulent terrariums and um, he taught me how to make them and we started making them for the shop that we own together. And I just like enjoyed it so much. I It was like the first time where I was like, holy moly, this is like super therapeutic. It's like something that I can imagine myself doing all the time. And I did like any free moment that we had like that we weren't working or something i was always in the garden either like making the little terrariums or i was just in there sort of like picking off dead leaves because i think that picking off dead leaves from succulents is like the most therapeutic thing ever if someone had a youtube channel dedicated to just like cleaning up succulents it's a niche someone start it someone do it because oh man i just yeah i could watch that all day the way that it just like comes right off it's just so clean it's like a clean break so that's when i first got into plants and obviously you know making these like succulent gardens of course i had my own so my first like real plants that i was taking care of and that relied on me to survive were just a bunch of succulents i wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what kind of succulents they were to this day i still don't know the names of succulents but those are the first ones that i ever had and then after that relationship when i moved back home i had a uh, i had a big monstera and then i had a 
bird of paradise and I had a um, I had like a rubber tree just kind of like the basics so that was like back in 2014 2013 2014 and it's weird because like they were actually doing really well and I never had any issues with pests like my bird of paradise never got spider mites my monstera never got thrips it was just like a non-issue for me and I didn't even know what the hell a thrip was until I moved here so I hadn't even seen a thrip or heard of a thrip until 20, 2017. Um, I had, you know, plants over the years and I had plants when I first moved here to Canada in 2017, 2016, 2017. Um, but again, those, for some reason, I just didn't have pests. So I, I got pretty lucky all those years. Um, but yeah, I had my first real run in with thrips when I got my big Monstera here, because obviously I couldn't bring my plants with me to Canada, which was kind of sad. I had to leave them behind, but it was fine because my mom inherited some of them. But yeah, those are my first plants. And the hobby has only ramped up for me ever since. So I've, I've sort of been in this whole like plant hobby for 12, like 12 years, but um, and I was actually potting in no drainage back then too because um, you know the succulents that we were potting were in like these terrariums so they were just in these like glass vessels. That was the way I learned how to pot plants were these terrariums and so I kind of took that mindset with me when I got into other kinds of plants like non-succulents. But anyway, um, yeah so I've been in the plant hobby for about 12 years but didn't really super get into the arid hobby until about 20, 2018, 2019. Um, and it's just been, just been downhill ever since. <laughs> My bank account's screaming. This is so satisfying. I've been wanting to peel these off so bad, but I wanted to wait until I did this repot. So I'm going to be going back and forth between client questions and personal questions so that we just get like a good balance of each of them. Um, but before I do that, I just want to quickly show you this root system, which is not great as I suspected because I knew that this thing has been unhappy for a really long time. There's a lot, there, there was a lot of root rot. To be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about moving it to this vessel, this new um, vessel because it's so large. And like I'm really not working with a great base here or a great foundation. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this thing, but either way it needed to be repotted and cleaned off. This has just been one of those plants that like I sort of lost interest in for a while and so I just don't give it the attention that I give to my other plants. Like, you know, I have like my favorites favorites and those ones I always make sure are getting checked in on but these are this is like one of them that sort of just kind of blended into the rest of my plants and I didn't really take the time to like care for it the way that I wanted to hopefully she appreciates today and does not get more upset with me ideally I would love to chop this but then I would be working with no root system because like look at how much this Look at how much of the vessel it takes up. Like I would love to start it right here and let it grow, but I also can't chop off this entire root system. Cause it's, yeah, it's only gonna have maybe three or four leaves and then I'm gonna have to unpot it again. I almost wonder if it's worth just propagating and waiting till some roots grow, but at the same time, I want to keep this crawling this crawling growth pattern going so that it's easier to get it into a horizontal planter. You know what, just screw it. I'm just gonna pot it and we'll deal with it when the time comes. I'm gonna regret that later, watch. This is like the prime example of me giving problems to my future self. So first thing I'm gonna do is Fill this bottom with pond. Sorry, this is like really annoying. Oh, because there's a perlite under here. There we go. I'm gonna fill it with Lekka, I mean. Oh, 
The reason that I'm using Lekka down at the bottom is because I do not want to use all my pond for this one vessel, and especially not for this plant. So it just kind of fills in some of that space. Um, the next question, oh, or next personal question anyway, for first personal question. Dang it, I have to pee. Freaking heck. Oh my gosh, this is a funny one. Why do you have so many haters? That's a good question, that one. I kind of know why I have a lot of haters. I feel, okay, and this is me just being like absolutely honest. I don't mean to be self-deprecating or like just, just like harsh or mean to myself, but respectfully, I find myself to be very annoying. I feel like I have an, a lot of annoying tendencies. The way I pronounce my words sometimes, like my S's, are something that literally drives me up the wall. It, it stings, it burns my brain. I don't like the way my S's sound. Um, I feel like my mouth does like really weird things sometimes when I talk and I don't even realize I talk like that. I actually didn't realize I talked like that until I started YouTube. So yeah. Um, not only that, I feel like, I don't know, my voice can get annoying sometimes. I feel like my mannerisms, the way I talk with my hands. I, I don't know. I think besides all the physical things that you can see in like the way I sound, um, I think that I think that a lot of, not just plant influencers, but a lot of just influencers in general or people who create content, I don't like to call myself an influencer. I don't even really like to call myself a content creator, but it is what it is. A lot of people who make content for the internet, I feel like they put on this persona that they're gonna go into, they're gonna go into it with just kindness and, and being gentle and and nice and not a non-problematic and non-confrontational which is totally fine because if that's how you want to approach it you have every right to but with that whole like sense of needing to protect I don't know, not protect, but like essentially do your own PR and make sure you don't ruin your reputation and make sure you don't get cancelled, whatever. Um, I feel like a lot of the hate that they get is just sweeped under the rug, not talked about, not discussed, just deleted, just never brought up. But I, I'm physically, I'm physically incapable of, um, of doing that. I don't, I don't always clap back to the hate, but I clap back to a lot of it. And I don't consider it to me, I don't considering it, I don't consider it being mean or whatever. I truly believe I just, I match their energy. I go into that conversation with the same energy they give me. And honestly, 99% of the time, it ends up with that person deleting their comment, and that's it. Uh, like. I've only had back and forth with, I want to say like, not even 1% of the, the people that leave like just grotesque comments on this channel. And I don't know if it like makes them like feel differently or if it makes them reconsider being like nasty like that on the internet. But to me, it's like, if not even teach a lesson, but if I can just check someone, it might deter them from leaving that kind of energy on someone else's channel. I'm just not, I'm just not okay with people coming into my space and disrespecting me. And um, that's what it is. I don't feel like all people who make content online needs to just play it cool and act like it doesn't happen. I just choose to um, handle it the way I handle it. And I feel like a good majority of people take that as me being a mean person or me being rude or me not being able to take constructive criticism but it's like don't gaslight me i know what constructive criticism is and there's many of you that can attest to this where we've had comments going back and forth where you're giving me advice on something or like literally saying like this is constructive criticism and me like accepting it and being like i understand you i hear you loud and clear like gotcha and you know and we respectfully go on with our lives but when someone gaslights me into thinking that like a blatantly rude comment is being constructive criticism, it's not going to go over well. So I think that's another reason that like I have a lot of haters is because I, I'm just like not quiet about it. 
and I kind of like that more people who are making content online are being less quiet because I just feel like for so long the trolls have just gotten away with saying anything that they want to when you know in real life these people would never say these things to someone's face I think another reason why I have a lot of haters is because I go about doing plants in a different way like with the no drainage thing or like chopping off a shit ton of roots that people would think is totally fine or I don't know scraping my chunks or scrubbing down leaves with a toothbrush I think it annoys them because they would never do that with their plants but here's the thing like Nowhere on this channel am I saying that like anything I do is like the only way to do it or is the right way to do it. Neither am I like saying that like you're forced to do this with your plant or you, like I don't know they just act like they just act like I'm doing it to their plant which is really weird so I don't know. I, I don't delete many comments. Um, some of the mean ones I don't delete, but if it's really, really like nasty and vile, like if it has something to do with like my family, because I've gotten those comments before about your your mom would be ashamed of you or your whatever, or if it's talking about or if they're talking about Pudge, those ones I tend to not keep up because like the internet doesn't need to have those kinds of comments up. But if it's about me or if it's about the way I plant and stuff, like I don't care, I leave it up. I don't care about people that don't like me. I don't care about people that don't like the way I do things because I only am affected by people I care about. So that's that. And you should be the same way too, honestly, whether or not you're like making content online. Anyway, the bottom line is that no matter what you do, someone's always gonna not like you. Someone's always gonna be annoyed by the things you do. Someone's always gonna find a reason to hate you and that's just that's just like the nature of being human i'm not here to try and convince anyone to like me that's the last thing i have time for anyway that's my two cents on <laughs> that question but she's potted and i'm hoping that some of these aer aerial roots that are sticking out over here will start rooting and i can get some more roots along that stem that was in that <laughs> really weird part of the moss hole, but I'm just happy she's taken care of and now hopefully she does not throw a fit. I'm going to try and clean up after every mess I make, but the day is young. I always have like really high hopes for myself and then I just let myself down. I've had this really, really terrible um, hip pain I don't know, like it doesn't feel like muscle and it doesn't feel like joint. It feels like my bones, which kind of concern me. But I've just been sleeping like crap the last few days because no matter what position I get in, I just have this aching in my hip. So I thought today by like going for a run, um, I don't know, that it would like help sort of loosen things up. But yeah, I feel worse. Mentally, mentally I feel better, but physically I feel worse. Okay, who's next? Um, who's the closest to me? Sure, why not? Let's do him. Philip Edmund, glad hands. What type? Oh, I have a pole. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm saving that pole. Okay, sorry. I had to get my life together really quick. I'm going to be reusing this moss pole that my... I don't even know who was on that. Was it my Monster Adansonia? Where is my Monster Adansonia? How come? Why am I missing everything? Next question, a plant question. Plant projects I'm excited for this year. This is a good question. So to remind you, um, I have two plant projects um, currently happening right now. The first one that I did wasn't really a project um, and it's not really an experiment because I've done this before with results, but I um, am in the process of notching my Philodendron Postazanum, which has a really, really long stem. And I showed it on my Instagram and I think I showed it in one video on this channel and I can't remember 
which video it would have been. But don't worry, like throughout the year I'm going to be doing dedicated plant project videos just to give you guys an update on how things are going. Um, the second one is the Homolomina, Homolomina Humulus Red Velvet that I'm growing aquaponically. Um, that's the second project that I'm working on, which is again going well and still kind of observing obser observing the growth. But, um, you know, once things start going in there, I don't know if I'm going to run into any issues, which is why it's a project slash experiment. Third project that I am currently working on is it's going to be a long form video. I'm not sure when it's going up because it's something that I'm documenting over time, but I'm doing like an observation on um, the use of TPS billions versus Dynamico versus white, uh, wait, great white mycorrhizal, mycorrhizal inoculants um, just to see how they perform in terms of root growth and like leaf growth if I notice any difference. So that is another one that I'm excited for. And the last plant project that I really have on my radar is my living room. So that one's more of like, like a design, like apartment slash plant project because it is my plant wall. It's like where a majority of my plants that are outside of my plant room are. I've never really been 100% happy with the way that setup was. I used to have two of those shelves that I have in my living room and the worst thing I ever did was sell one of them. I would have loved to have two of those shelves right next to each other, but the thing is is that the space between the shelves is actually pretty um, is pretty short and I would love to have a shelf with maybe less shelves but like longer space in between. I was going to say longer internodes. <laughs> Uh, longer space in between so that I can fit like my anthuriums e more easily in there or just fit plants in general more easily in there so I am looking to not I'm not going to get rid of that shelf but I'm just looking to replace it or just figure out what the plan is going to be for that wall because I'm not sure if I want to do like a whole shelf like maybe like two shelves next to each other or do like built-in shelves or something I kind of want to do sort of like a shelf with like credenza and maybe like i don't know like art i i kind of want to make it feel a little bit more styled and not like oh this is my plant wall uh but i keep going back and forth between different designs and all of the like shelves and like the credenzas that i really like are <laughs> they're in a pay grade that i don't think i will ever be in like why are shelves so freaking expensive? So that's going to be like a long project. I wouldn't even doubt if that wall doesn't get done till like Christmas, if that. But not really a priority right now. I mean, it kind of looks crappy when I'm filming out there. But I never have anyone over and I don't know. I don't feel a lot of pressure to get that done right away. I would much rather um, keep putting money away in savings because my husband and I are saving aggressively for a house which also feels like an impossible goal sometimes but you know can't give up before you start. Had a little bit of root breakage but not a lot and we've got some good juicy roots here which will be great for a pond transfer and I'm actually gonna just mix this pond into or mix this perlite into my pond. I'm just gonna pick out some of the broken roots, but even if there are some broken roots in it, I don't, I don't know, I don't really mind it that much. I feel like it's not a huge deal, but really like I'm not seeing a ton of root breakage, which is surprising considering how coarse this um, perlite is. One thing about this kind of perlite that is super, super porous is that roots can grow right roots can grow right through it i don't know if you guys saw it but there was a root growing right through that piece of perlite yeah porous perlite is great but sometimes like during repots it can be a little bit tricky but a little bit of root damage is not it's not a big deal i just don't like when um big like primary roots get severed off that one that one physically hurts me. My hands are very, very 
filthy. I'm a texture person and I hate when my hands are dirty. Um, but I don't want to use those single use nitro gloves for every repot that I do. I only do that if I have like a cut on it or something. Um, okay, 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 okay. Let's do a little bit of, do I want to do her light or I think I'm going to do a little bit of Lekka down at the bottom just because this is all of the pond that I like prepared pond that I have for this repot and I don't want to have to prepare more. And I still have two plants that need to be in pond. What question was I answering? Did I answer that question? Oh, plant projects. Um, yeah, so those are the plant projects that I'm excited for. Again, left off with my living room one. Not really sure what the plan is, but it's something that I am sort of thinking about right now. This one was, are there any plant influencers you don't like slash who is your favorite plant YouTuber? So um, let me start with the last question, which is my favorite plant YouTuber. Um, obviously I'm biased, but I would say my favorite is Alice. <laughs> Am I allowed to have that as an answer? I don't know. It's just easy to watch her um, because I like I'm friends with her in real life, and it's like the way that she is on YouTube is exactly how she is in person, and it just it almost feels like I'm just sitting in her plant room, like just hanging out with her, like we normally would. Oh, I forgot my pole. Um, and I don't know, she's funny and she's charismatic and I think she has a great presence in front of the camera and she's just easy to watch for me because, I don't know, she's my friend, did I say that already? So she's my favorite, I don't know if that's even like a proper answer or answer you guys wanted to hear but it's the truth, she's my fave. Um, other YouTubers that I like, I like... Fern, Wild Fern, I like Benji, I like Slug Plants. Who was I watching like way before? Amy, Wolfgang's Mama. I really wasn't following a lot of plant YouTubers um, even before I was a YouTuber. It just wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't something that I was super interested in, which is ironic that I became one, but you know, it is what it is. So. There's the answer to that question. And then in terms of plant YouTubers specifically that I don't like, uh, I'm not gonna say specific to YouTube, but there are definitely plant influencers that have rubbed me the wrong way. Um, probably about a handful of them, which I'm not gonna name. That's not what this channel is about. I'm never gonna just like publicly talk crap about someone and start drama. But I'm human, I'm not going to sit here and say, nobody annoys me, I love everyone, and I'm not going to be fake. There are definitely people that have rubbed me the wrong reason, have rubbed me the wrong way for different reasons. Some are just little spats we've maybe gotten into on like a, a thread on Instagram, or someone that dragged me into some bullshit that I didn't want to be a part of. Uh, people being overly and weirdly competitive with me when I'm literally just fucking minding my own business. That whole scenario irked me because I didn't even like know that I was going to be a part of this weird drama that was not talked about and was just kind of implied through very passive aggressive posts and stories and stuff. So I just removed myself from that situation. Other people noticed it and brought it up to me and that's when I started to get annoyed because I'm like, look, if you have an issue with me, that's a you problem. That sounds like a you problem. Unless I fucking came to your house and like egged your car or something, then leave me the hell out of your bullshit. Like I didn't say that I was a super likable person. I'm not here to like, make friends with like all the plant YouTubers so that like my following can be boosted. Like literally if we don't vibe, then we don't vibe. We can just like go our separate ways and not have to deal with each other. But when mutual followers of ours start like sliding into my DMs asking like, is this about you? Is this post about you? Then yeah, I'm gonna fucking have a problem with that and be annoyed because the only thing I do is mind my, my own business. Seriously, I am turning 34 this year. I thought I was turning th 33, so I'm a little pissed off 
at that in general that I feel like I've lost a year. But I'm turning 34 this year. I don't have time to be like sucked into your high school ass drama, like for real. I had enough drama in high school and I am not trying to relive that again in my adult years. Sorry, it's not gonna happen. She was a little passionate about that, wasn't she? <laughs> what am I, why am I, why did I get a, oh, a strap. <laughs> So we got her in this far. I'm just trying to stabilize it. And what I'm gonna do is stick a rock in there and stick it on this side because it's leaning that way. And then I'll add a little bit more pond. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I really have to say about that, but I don't like no, I don't hate anyone. I don't hate anyone. I'm just annoyed by a few people. Yes, does that mean I hate them and I would wish them harm or anything bad? No. Would I try and get them canceled? No, because I would end up canceling myself inadvertently because canceling people is not cool. Um, oh gosh, is that a freaking mealy bug? Oh gosh, it's Moss. She's a hot mess today. Whoa, I've been recording for an hour. Okay, let's wrap this up and then I'm gonna let my camera cool down, poor thing. So I'm just gonna get like a little lazy strap on here to hold it in. And I don't think this is the right size, but I'm gonna make it the right size. Damn it, I don't have a, oh, scissor. Uh, yeah, so let's leave it at that. I don't, no, I don't. I don't hate anyone, but I stay in my lane. I keep my distance from the people that I don't drive with. And that's how you protect your peace and protect your space. And I don't feel guilty about it because I don't think that everyone needs to be friends with everyone. And yeah, choosing your friends wisely is something I have <laughs> learned throughout my teenage and adulthood. You do not have to be friends with everyone. Before I got into the plant community, I considered to have like three real friends, like three actual friends um, in my life. Whereas so many of my friends from high school just had like these huge groups of friends that they were a part of. And I didn't have that. And at some point I was really, I don't know, I was like, oh, it would be nice to have that. But then I just realized the people that I actually kept close were the ones that would be with me like throughout the rest of my life so yeah i feel like i made the right decision um i think i'm gonna wait what am i thinking of i'm kind of thinking of topping this with moss to stabilize it a little bit more i just so so easy to go get my moss that's the only problem no screw it you only live once all right after this commercial break, the next question I will be answering is how do you feel about plant influencers charging for plant advice slash consulting? So taking a ad break and I'll see you right after the beat. Oh, that's for an answering machine. Uh, so this Glad Hands is potted up now. Let me just give you a close up really fast. It is in a parfait method, um, really only because I don't want to use that much pawn and I want to stabilize this pole while it's brand new and that's why the moss is on top. She's looking, she's looking cuter already. So uh, the last thing that I want to do with this plant is just give the leaves a wipe down before I get it back on the shelf. It's a little bit dusty from just being back here for a few months. So while I do that, I will answer that question. So to be honest, I think that you can make a business out of everything. If I sat here and said, oh, like, I think it's bullshit that plant influencers are charging for plant advice or charging for plant consulting, whatever, you could say the same thing about me having this YouTube channel. Like, I am monetized, I am making money from each video. Nothing that's gonna retire me anytime soon, but like money is money. And so, you know, I, I 
can't sit here and say like how dare you make money off of what's supposed to be a hobby the only i guess concern or the only question i would have about that is like are the people that you're paying to help you with your plants um are they trustworthy so I'm more than happy to give plant advice if someone slides into my DMs when I ever even get in there. And I always say like, I'd love to help if I can. And I always try and ask for as many photos and ask as many questions as I can so that I can have an idea of what the, like what the situation is. But would I ever feel confident in my skills or knowledge to charge someone for that advice? No. Um, I think the only way I would be able to justify me charging prices or charging a fee for my advice or my time in general is if I was like a certified like botanist or horticulturist or like, you know, like I went to school for it. I, you know, I have proper education. Everything that I have learned is through experience and shit I've read on the internet. Everyone sort of has access to the same information online. And so for me, I feel like my way of helping is by just making this YouTube channel essentially an extension of what's going on up here. Obviously, I'm making money from it, but I feel better that I'm not like charging for it. Like I'm not sending you an invite invoice like hey like we talked for an hour you, you owe me like 50 bucks again no shade to people who do it i have friends um in the community that do that and you know it's a good business for them they enjoy it they like it and i'm not here to ever stop someone's bags but for me personally, I would never do it. And I would just say, be careful who you trust and like who you're giving your money to. Just make sure you do your research and your homework. If you if they have somewhere where you can read reviews on like, you know, their services or whatever, that would be better than just blindly going into it saying like, oh, look, this person has 90,000 followers or has 60,000 followers. They must know what they're talking about or they must have, ow. They must be um, knowledgeable enough for me to like trust them. Don't ever trust a number that you see on the internet. Like I have what, 41,000 Instagram followers? Don't trust it. Half of those followers are probably freaking plant sellers trying to sell me some damn plants. That's my piece on it. But seriously, I'm like loving this plant so much more now that it's on a pole. She's so cute. And she's so shiny. The next one up are double D's. I have one in pond. Actually, they're both in pond. Let's get them unpotted and I will answer the next question. Personal question, I guess. Oh man, this question. <laughs> I hate this question. This question has always made me nervous since the day I, I first heard it when I was 16 interviewing for my first job and it was where do you see yourself in five years there was a point in time where i wanted to become a nurse and i only wanted to become a nurse because one that's the culture being filipino um and two all you hear about being a nurse in the filipino culture is jobs like job security job stability and like the good pay and so of course as like a kid i'm like oh yeah good pay i want money sure and I sort of went my whole life sort of having that as my safety net. Like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be a nurse. I don't have to think about it because I'm just gonna be a nurse. Like I always told myself I was gonna be a nurse. And then I get to college and I take these prereqs for the nursing program. She fucked around and found out. She really did. I just realized quickly how badly I would fail in that career and i sort of had like a crisis my first year of college because i had gone my whole life not really ever thinking twice about what my career was going to be because i had just gone my whole life telling everyone i was going to be a nurse so then you know i get to first year college and i'm like 
no, 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 no. I don't want to do this. And I was so lost. I was so confused. I was so intimidated by these classes that I, I think I might have told this story on my, um, on my channel before, but I literally dropped, I dropped out of, I dropped out of college. So that was the first time I dropped out. It was during a stats test. I had no freaking clue what anything meant on the page and I had a full blown panic attack. I ran out of that classroom so fast, almost fainted outside of the classroom. And as soon as I gathered myself, I walked straight to the, um, what is it? The counseling office or whatever. And I was like, I would like to drop out of college, please. And she was like, okay, let's not make any rash decisions right now. I was like, nope, I would like to drop out, please. Like fully drop out. And she, she honestly tried to talk me out of it like so many times, but I was like, whether you drop me out or not, I'm not showing up tomorrow. That's just all I have to say. So I dropped out of school. I didn't tell my parents. I pretended to go to school for almost an entire semester. And any time that I said I was in school, I would drive a couple miles away to the nearest Starbucks. I'd get a dirty chai tea latte and I would sleep in my car for like four hours. Safe to say I was pretty depressed, I was pretty depressed, I was lost and I felt like all of the people I went to high school with were like, they were, you know, at university and they were all like, they all were all gung-ho about what they wanted to do and I just had no fucking clue. So I ended up going into the fashion industry which really, it's truly comical now thinking about it. But yeah, there was a point in time where I wanted to go into fashion. I got my associate's degree in fashion design and merchandising, or was it marketing? The fact I don't even know what I have a degree in. It's, it's one of those, merchandising or marketing. I sort of used that degree because I was a visual merchandiser for a few years and I worked for Gap, Old Navy, All Saints, Urban Outfitters, Forever 21. Yeah, I worked for a bunch of different places and um, I just realized so fast that I did not like, I didn't like the fashion industry. Especially, I dated a model once. I dated a model once. That was the worst decision of my life. Not like we were like boyfriend and girlfriend, but like I went on like two dates with a model. And it was so funny because we met through um, this agency in San Francisco that I was working for and I was working for like the president of that agency and so I had to like coordinate with all the models and I was kind of like his right hand woman. So that's how I met this dude, right? And I'm like, man, this is a very good looking guy and he was just starting off and he finally got like a break, you know, after so many like different castings. Um, he finally got a break with Gap and landed this like marketing campaign with them. I would not, I could never hear the end of it. It was like every other freaking word he said, it's just like, oh yeah, call time's at like seven. Call time's at seven. I, I don't know, I gotta be there at seven. I'm like, dude, I know how photo shoots work, man. You don't have to like say it a million times. And he, I mean, yeah, he was just excited. Obviously I should be happy for him, but it got so annoying. I was like, I will never, <laughs> ever date a model again and it's so funny because he's still i'm not gonna reveal who it is he's not like famous or anything but um yeah it's funny because like i'll be in the mall sometimes and i'll just randomly see a photo of him in like a window of a store i'm like oh good for you worked out for you but yeah that was not an ideal dating situation for me so roots of this one are pretty good had a little bit of root breakage, um, some mushy roots and old roots, but nothing of concern. Um, I do want to just like get this washed down in the sink and like rinse off any slimy gunk, maybe even do like a quick hydrogen peroxide soak just to get it a little bit more clean, but we'll see where the day takes us. But I want to get this other guy out of there too. What was the question? <laughs> oh, where do I see myself in five years? So yeah, that's my life story at the end. 
Um, but no, I've just always hated this question because I, I feel like I've just kind of flip-flopped through different things and um, it wasn't until I hit like my kind of like mid-20s that I realized that I sort of had this like entrepreneurial side of me that I got from my grandpa but I didn't really explore it that much because you know nobody really in my family was like starting businesses or owned businesses and it was besides my grandpa who had already passed by then yeah we didn't really talk about it a lot and it just felt like such a daunting idea to like work for myself you know um but yeah i basically went with that route starting in my mid-20s and i had a few different businesses some successful some not and right now I do still own my own business. It's primarily an online business. Um, it used to not be online, meaning like I would ship like physical products, but I realized that I hate shipping and I hate paying for um, production costs. So I went all digital, which is less profitable, but a lot easier to run. In a nutshell, I make supplementary curriculum and activities for homeschool families. And I do everything myself. I am party of one. And it has been that, that journey was so much more fulfilling and rewarding than I ever thought it would be. So I moved to Canada in like officially in 2017 and I, you know, I was a business owner before I moved, and so I went into this move to Canada thinking that's what I'm going to continue with. Like, I didn't like the idea of, like, coming here and, like, looking for a job, and I don't know, it just, like, stressed me out. I just really still wanted to work for myself, and I was working remotely for um, a company at the time as well. That did not work out well. Ended up in court, it was a whole thing. She's like one of the nastiest people I've ever met. I don't truly hate anyone in my life besides her and her husband and one other person. But yeah, just a nasty, terrible person. And after that experience, I was like, I just wanna work for myself full time. I don't wanna have to deal with like this and go through that again. So yeah, started my business and I wasn't quite sure where it was going to go in the beginning. It sort of took shape on its own after like, I want to say a year. And I ended up really, really liking it, but I got burned out so stinking fast. I got burned out really fast. Um, and that's kind of when I started taking this hobby a little bit more seriously. So it was kind of like my outlet, like something else that I could do that I enjoy that can take my time and distract me from work and being on the computer and just trying to get a new business off the ground with zero funding, zero knowledge of the industry. It was, it was really, really intimidating and it was overwhelming. Um, but it's doing it's doing fine now. It's like running itself I mean it could be doing better if I was like putting more time and effort into it, but now my time is kind of cut or like shared between my plant stuff and and that um, But now that I'm like monetizing my YouTube it's definitely justified it a little bit more but I don't like I don't know I don't know if this is something that I can do forever. Like the industry that I'm in, in terms of my business is something that's always going to be around. There will always be new families coming into the homeschool world. Uh, like it is, it is a lucrative business if you're good at it and if you work really hard, but there's like this part of me and I don't know if this is just like this super, super pessimistic side of me, but there's a part of me that always feels like this is temporary. Like this is not, even if the business was doing super, super well, I have this like mentality that like, how can I do this forever? Like that's what's gonna pay my bills and that's what's gonna get me into retirement. Like it just doesn't seem feasible. And with this plant thing, like, I'm making like decent side money. I'm gonna call it side money. It's not by any means like proper income. I'm making decent side money, but even if let's say that this 
YouTube channel grew and my vlog channel grew and I was making like double, triple what I'm making now, like I can't do this forever. Like I'm gonna get old one day and who's gonna watch like 70 year old Sherman repotting her plants? Like I don't know, I just don't know. So I don't know. That was a really, really long answer just to tell you I don't know but I guess I felt like I was in therapy a little bit. I guess I'm still trying to evict this idea that I've had my whole life, mainly because it's what was taught to me by like, you know, family and my parents and stuff that like, you have to be something when you get older and everyone has to have a place in society and you have to have a 401k and you have to have a retirement plan and all of these things that like freaked me the hell out as a kid like oh you've got to have a savings account and a 401k and um you know you have to have an emergency fund and a travel fund and a fund for your kids college like i'm like how does anybody even like get by in life like i'm literally just trying to make sure i can pay my credit card bills on time so i'm trying to evict this idea that like everyone has to have this career that they're just naturally good at and that's gonna like get them into retirement. I wanna let that go because I feel like the world that we're in is changing really drastically and um, this like new generation of us that are adults now, which is so scary. I feel like we're not as like neurotic about that as like the generation before us was. Not, nor are we really preaching to like the kids that they have to like, they have to go to college and they have to do this like as soon as they graduate, like we're kind of just like letting people like live the life that they want. Um, but it's still scary to think about because at the end of the day, I always still feel like, well, you've got to have a plan. You can't just like go every day thinking like, I'm just going to get by with what's on, what's in my pocket. But it's just really scary being an adult. Nobody freaking tells you how scary it is being an adult because I would consider myself like a pretty free spirit, but I am a planner to a certain extent. And I want to know that like when I'm not able to work anymore, that I'm going to be okay, especially since I don't know if I'll ever have kids. Like I know that having kids is not an excuse to say like, oh yeah, someone's going to take care of me. But there is sort of that like you have a little bit of like a backup plan or like something to fall back onto but i hope in five years i'm in a better place mentally i hope that i'm in a better place physically because i hope that i'm in a place financially where i'm hoping maybe we own a house or if not we're getting close to owning a house and in terms of my job i hope i'm still doing this I mean, I can see myself doing YouTube for a long time um, or for as long as YouTube will have me and the people that watch will have me, but who knows? I, I really have not planned it that far ahead, which um, I'm trying to not like freak out about because I don't have a plan. Let's just put it that way. There is no plan here. I'm just kind of like YOLOing it. All right. <clears throat> Next question. That was way too, that was way too much talking about me. Okay, let's like rapid fire through some of these because some of them are just really fast. Um, so the first one is, where do you get your pawn? Uh, sometimes I get it straight through Lechuza Pawn, which is very rare. It's not a substrate that is avail available all the time. It sells out really freaking fast and they have caps on like how many people can order or like they have caps on how many you can order in one order so i did manage to snag one in the last restock but that one went pretty fast and i gave my remaining pawn that i had to my friend erin who really needed it and she came through for me um the last time i needed pawn so i was happy to do the same for her but um yeah i have run out of the like lechuza 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 we'll Pond brand, Lechuza we'll Pond, um, a long time ago, and I am now just using my Party Pond, which is Ina's Mix um, from the Variegated Plant Shop in Las Vegas. She does ship nationwide, and she also ships her pond to Canada. So if you haven't been able to get pond from um, Lechuza Pond, then yeah, try 
Ina's Pawn. The only thing I will say with Ina's Pawn, and this is just being, you know, honest and upfront, her mix is pretty dusty, so you will want to like strain it really, really, really well before you use it. You can't just use it right out of her little bags and put it straight into the vessel. You have to strain it like multiple times because there is going to be a ton of dust in there. You may also want to give it um, a couple rinses. If you have a hose, that would be ideal, but I don't. So I have to strain mine like a lot before I use it so that like that dust is not going down my drain. But once you get it all ready for use, it's great. I just add some Orchiata to it. Like the, I think it's the fine grade that I'm using. Fine grade Orchiata and then also a lot, a lot of perlite. And it's pretty much ready to go after that. Hers doesn't come with slow release pawn what why can't i talk today hers doesn't come with slow release fertilizer which is fine because i actually stopped using slow release in my pawn anyway um the lechuza lechuza pawn brand does come with pawn but it comes with very little so it's like not like a lethal amount also if you're into making your own pawn my friend jing who has her own youtube channel she has a video on how she makes her homemade pawn and hers is really really nice i think this is actually this is either jing's or alice's homemade pawn and um it's a really good mix i like it so yeah i'll link that in the description too if you are interested in like making your own the only reason I haven't made my own is because it's a lot of ingredients that you buy in bulk that need to be cleaned off and rinsed and strained and the nature of me like doing this hobby inside of an apartment where I don't have a hose to just like spray it down really quick it just makes it harder for me so I'd much rather just use someone else's pond that is already prepared. Am I slouching? Ugh. My posture is terrible. So I'm giving this one like a really good wipe down because this one had spider mites like last week. And once I get it repotted, I'm gonna have to respray it with either Azimax or maybe just um, my Safer's insecticide or miticide. The only thing is I don't wanna spray that miticide on this new leaf because it has been damaging all of my emergent leaves, so. I may just go with neem, or not neem, I may just go with Azimax, but avoid this new leaf because Alice said that her um, Azimax has burned some of her new leaves before. Okay, um, I've got one leaf in here that I'm actually just going to chop, chop off. This little ripped guy. Can you get TPS billions in Canada? No, unfortunately not. Um, you can't get any TPS products in Canada. The only reason that they haven't shipped or the only reason they don't ship to Canada right now is because there's all this red tape and restrictions about shipping fertilizers into Canada. Um, a lot of sort of policies and things that they have to comply with that I'm sure cost money and just is like a whole process. So yeah, the last time I spoke to them, they were looking into it, they're working on it apparently, and they said that they're still about a year out before they can ship anything to Canada. So unfortunately right now you cannot get TPS products in Canada, but if you are able to get your hands on billions, just please do, I love it so much. Do you brush your teeth faster in the morning? Yes, I do. Should I do my fancy pawn for this one? Or fancy Lekka? This is my, my fancy Lekka from um, Lauren. It, there's nothing fancy about it. I just like the way that it looks. I like the color of it. So I'm going to use this and it's actually not like very dusty. I mean, I can see a little bit of dust down here, but it's pretty like, I don't know, it's pretty clean. Oh, they're lighter. So they're lighter and they seem a little bit, they seem a little bit more porous than the Leka I have been using. But I love the color. I do brush my teeth faster in the morning, mostly because I have a very sort of strict schedule in the morning that I have to stick to or else I am neurotic. Whoa. And I feel anxious about getting 
all of those things out of the way before I can like start my work day. So I tend to kind of like rush through everything that I do in the morning. It's like, it's like a rat race um, to get everything done. So whenever I'm like brushing my teeth in the morning, I'm like, oh my God, this is like taking forever. This is such an inconvenience. So I don't do like the full two minutes that my toothbrush tells me to do, but you know, I'll probably maybe brush my teeth for like a minute and a half or like a minute and 15 seconds. I do floss though. I have to floss like three times a day or else I feel really, really gross. Water, oh, here's another dental question. <laughs> um, water flossing thoughts. Uh, my thoughts are good. I actually own a water floss, water pick, and I love it. Um, I have a lot of like weird crevices in my mouth. I don't know, here's a fun fact. Some of you guys might have noticed already, it's actually one of my biggest insecurities, but I'm missing a tooth. I'm missing a tooth, and I've been missing a tooth for I think like going on 13 years now, like that tooth has been missing. Here's a story time on that. Someone asked for a story time, so this will be my one story time in this repot. But I had a dentist, like my family dentist for so long, this Filipino man. And he, like, if you guys know, <laughs> it's called TFC. It's like, it's called, it's like the Filipino channel and they have all their soaps and the news and just all things Filipino or Philippines. and. Every time I went to get something done with my teeth, he was watching TFC and he would be really like really into the stuff he was watching. So into it that literally while he's like drilling in my mouth, he's looking at the TV while he's drilling in my mouth. And I would get so freaked out. I'm telling you, that guy should have been shut down for malpractice. But we went to him because he was freaking Filipino and he always gave us a discount, which is shady. You don't give somebody a discount just because they're Filipino. Anyway, um, so let's say that uh, we just had a bad time there. I had the worst root canal job done on this tooth. I ended up going to, so I got a root canal, it got infected. I went to another dentist who fixed it, but I had to get like this full surgery done. And I got something called dry socket. Oh my gosh, you guys. Dry socket is the worst. Pain I have felt in my life hands down if I could like if someone said like what would be like the worst torture method I would say give them dry socket because there is nothing there is no pain like it imagine you have just unearthed your gums right they just they just drilled this hole into your gums and you have all these exposed nerves Dry socket is when the blood doesn't clump over that hole on its own properly and it just leaves this hole in your gums and your nerves are just exposed to the air, it's exposed to fluids and foods. It is awful. For an entire week straight, I was literally going into the ER just like screaming and writhing in pain, begging them for an IV, begging them for any kind of like painkiller that would put me out of my misery. It was one of those pains where you're like, you can't stop moving because it's just this radiating pain. And I was miserable for like a week. I was on all different kinds of medication. It's how I found out I was allergic to oxycodone. It just made me feel like I had ants inside of my body. I got so itchy. I was on morphine. I was on any kind of pain medicine that you can think of. I had that dry socket for five, four days and it was the worst four days of my life. I was just crying 24 hours a day. I was in bed for all four days. Um, my boyfriend at the time was actually very, very good to me. He really took care of me and there's no way that I would have gotten through it without him. So I am thankful for that. But that was like the worst pain ever. So got dry socket on that. And then I got to my dentist now who I really like. I've already had all, all but one of my wisdom teeth removed which i was really scared about because i'm super super scared of like dental procedures had no issues with them i was telling them i was like look i want to get my wisdom teeth out but i will i will sue you i will sue you if i get dry socket and i forced my dentist to give me his direct number to his personal cell phone i said if i call you screaming in the middle of the night i expect you to be at your office ready to like put me out of my misery if I get dry socket. And he actually did, he gave me his number and I had him on speed dial just 
ready to call him. But luckily I was a little bit more careful this time and I didn't get dry socket, thank goodness. Um, but now he's been wanting to do like a bridge here, like get like a replacement tooth or a crown or whatever. But like it requires them to, I don't know, like do something to my gums. And I'm just, I have like a legit fear of dental surgery after I got dry socket. So, I mean, even before the dry socket, when that, um, uh, that root canal went bad, it was like an awful pain that just radiated through my neck, through my ear. It was like all nerve pain. Nerve pain is the worst, man. So yeah, I've got a missing tooth and uh, I have not gone and had my last wisdom tooth removed, which is down here. I had to go or I have to go to a specialist for this one because there's a nerve wrapped around something and it requires them to like fully put me under and, and like extract it that way because I was awake for the three that they took out and it was fine but they said that I won't be able to do it with my fourth one. So I have to do that, plus get this like replacement thingamabob and I just won't go. I'm too scared. But I did say that I was gonna try and like at least get my last wisdom tooth handled this year. Still have not called them back, but uh, it's only February, we have time. What was the question? <laughs> oh yeah. So I have a water floss because of like the missing tooth and I have this really weird gap in the back of my um, my back teeth here. Things tend to get stuck back there so I have to use the water pick to get it out or else it starts to hurt. So I do love water picks but I don't use it as an alternative to flossing. I kind of use it as like in addition to my brushing routine or my teeth cleaning routine. Um, I've never actually used it solely for flossing. Um, I feel like even after using a water pick, I still am able to like get things that I normally wouldn't be able to get when I floss, when I actually floss my teeth. So yeah, I would say like if for any reason there's like a condition where like you can't floss or something, I, mean, I don't know if that's a thing. I would say using a water pick is probably better than not doing anything at all, so. My Dean's ease is done. Hopefully this like new leaf didn't take too much of a beating, but um, yeah, I think she's really very, very cute. She's like a bush, a bushy, <laughs> a bushy little angel. I don't know why I can't talk today. I picked a really bad day to film, but I didn't have a choice because my husband's Sniffing has been driving me freaking mad. I have um, a thing about, I don't know if this like classifies me as like misophonic. I don't know if that's how you say it, but like I have a thing about sounds that other people make. Chewing, um, swallowing, sniffing. Um, even when people like rub their eyes and I can hear the little like squishy sounds that their eyelids make, don't like that. I don't like when people like eat and I can hear the teeth, like their teeth hit the metal of the spoon. Um, it's just a lot of weird, a lot of weird things about sounds that other people make. So when I can hear Vince sniffling in the background while I'm filming, I completely lose my train of thought. And I know that it's not his fault. Like he has like a legit sinus issue, but I see red. <laughs> Like, I just want to smash my face into a wall and choke myself. So now I'm trying to only film when he's not here, which is not very often because he works from home three days a week. So yeah, makes it kind of difficult. I think it's time to go on another ad break and I'm going to get cleaned up and we're going to get straight into this elbow. The first thing that I'm going to do is literally chop this leaf off because I have not seen thrips on this for a long time, but considering how much thrips damage is on here, I just don't like to take any chances and I just cut any leaves that have this much damage on it. Again, I only kept it because I needed it for a video. And now that that video is filmed, she is gonna go bye bye because I'm not risking any thrips resurrecting from that leaf tissue. It's just not worth it for me to keep that one leaf even if there's no more um, eggs in the tissue. So that's it.
that's that. This one is in perlite and moss, but I think I have decided I'm gonna do soil. I just, I don't know, my other Monstera is in soil. I just have good luck with, not good luck, but I have the most experience with Monsteras in soil. I find that they grow really robustly in soil, so, so we're just gonna do soil. Um, and now for more rapid fire questions. What should I pollinate with my Bessier pollen? That's a good question. You know what's funny is like the Bessier was not really on my list for a long time. Like, I don't know, it like it's a nice anthurium, but it wasn't something that I was like, oh my gosh, I need this now. But the more time that goes on, I'm like, hey, I do need a Bessier. My scissors. Why do I keep losing everything that I love? Oh, it's in here. He's all tucked in like a burrito. I'm just gonna cut this baby open because it is tight. I love how striking the venation is on the Bessier. Off the top of my head, it would be cool to see a Bessier Lux. I think that Equigenera has a Bessier Lux and they look pretty cool. Um, and I'm finding that Lux hybrids are pretty, like, they're pretty resilient and strong hybrids. Oh my gosh, look at my muscles. Look at this crap. Ugh. So yeah, it would be cool to see a Lux. I feel like everyone is... <laughs> Hybridizing everything with the Lux these days. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Another cool hybrid with the Bessier would be a Nigrolemonum GG. I think that could be a cool hybrid in terms of like the texture and like the leaf shape. Not quite. I, I think I think someone actually might have hybridized that, but I don't. I can't remember off the top of my head what it looks like. But yeah, having the Nigrolemonum GG as the seed parent and then the Bessier as the pollen parent would be pretty cool. And then another like pretty common anthurium that would be cool with it, I would say, is like a Forgettii, specifically a like dark Forgettii, the ones with like the neon venation or just really, really dark venation, not so much the Forgettii silver, because like the Forgettii silver, I mean, it doesn't have really the same exact silvery venation as a Bestier, but I think it would be really cool to get like that dark, dark, bullet forgetty eye leaf with a Bessier, but like Bessier Venation. This thing is so root bound. And then um, another question is pawn or soil for Anthurium? Um, my go-to is pawn. I just find that they're a little bit more forgiving in pawn and like, I like that in pond you can keep a higher like water reservoir whereas with soil you don't want to like have it be just like wet and muddy all the time and anthurium really love uh moisture especially when an emergent leaf is coming out so yeah pond is just kind of my go-to but i do have some anthuriums in soil and they're doing just fine um but if i just had to choose one substrate for them, uh, I would say pawn. Where does this go? If I could only own five of my plants for the rest of my life, which ones would they be? Off the top of my head, definitely my tordum. I can't live without my tordum. My tordum is my baby. Definitely my Dicaria madagariensis. My green monstera, because I just feel like a house is not a home without a monstera, period. Preferably a green monstera, not even like a variegated one. That's like my comfort plant. It's the plant that gives me the most grief in terms of thrips, but it's a plant that I just, I can't live without. My Anthurium Dark Phoenix is one that I would definitely love to keep forever. It's gotta be like a pretty close tie between my philodendron um, Dean McDowell and my philodendron Heterocraspidon. But if I only had to pick one, oh, I don't like this. I don't like this predicament that I've been put in. I'm thinking Dean McDowell because I love, like I just feel like everyone needs like a pillowy philodendron. But then also my Heterocraspidon because we just love like a good like long leaf, a good strappy leaf. Dang it. Oh, but a Politiflorum too. No, 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 no. This root system is actually really big. I cannot believe this whole thing fit into that little cup. What the hecky becky. 
This is a little bit bigger than I wanted to go, but here we are, and it's definitely a much better fit. Such a big root system for a tiny little plant. Would you ever collaborate with fern? I've had this question before, actually, and the answer is yes. I don't know what we would do, but I would love to. We just don't live very close to each other, even though we're both like on the same side of DC. She lives on an island, which is a ferry right away. So it's not super easy to just like get to her. If she was like an hour drive away or like an hour and a half drive away, trust me, I would have forced myself into her house by now. <laughs> Sorry, Fern. But um, yeah, I would love to, but yeah, it's just, we're not, like, I don't think she comes here very often, and if she does, it's, like, for something really specific. And I literally have not been to the island in years since, I think the last time I went there was in 2013, or 2014, actually. So, yeah, it's been a while. Here's the pole that I'm going to be using. It's the same pole that I used for my glad hands. These poles are from Lauren, and I really like them. Um, but this is the clear one, clear, clear, not translucent, but clear. It does have this film over it, which is why it looks translucent, but it's very, very clear. It's clean and clear. It's clearer than clean and clear. Clean and clear could never. What is, do you think is the most, most overrated and underrated plant? Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that I think is an overrated plant, but definitely for underrated, it's my Dracaena marginata that comes to mind for the first one. It's such a fun plant. Oh, is there only one? Oh, okay. I guess there's only one piece of plastic on here. So yeah, that's the first one that comes to mind. It's like one of my favorite plants. I feel like the Dracaena marginata sort of got clumped into that category of like you know, like old people plants because like our grandparents used to have it and our parents or whatever. Um, it's just like associated with being like an old person's plant or like a plant you see in like a care home or something or a hospital. Like for me, every Filipino household had a ficus benjamina, um, had a rubber plant and had a corn plant. Yeah, I feel like that plant has become lumped into that category, but it's such a cool plant, especially once you unbraid them and you just let the stems do whatever they want. They're like Dr. Seuss plants and they give like a really, really like modern look to a space. I don't know. It's just, you got to get one. Like when they're little, they're kind of like unassuming and underwhelming like when they're like little tiny things with like little bushes but once they get tall and i'll show you a photo of mine sort of at its prime it's a little bit rehabby right now but yeah it was so fun it was like my little dr seuss plant and i just think that's such a cool a cool plant um another plant that i think is really underrated and again sort of like lumped into this category of being like an old people plant. No offense to old people. I feel old too. Another one is the yucca, the yucca plant. When it's small, just like the Dracaena marginata, it looks really, I don't know, I don't know, it looks kind of boring. It doesn't really look like anything cool, but like here's a mature yucca tree. So cool. Very like Joshua tree, like you're in the desert. I don't know, it's like very like mid-century modern. Like I could see that like if you have a mid-century modern home or even like maybe not a Scandinavian home. I think if you have like sort of a Scandi design in your house, like I would go more for the Dracaena marginata that has like a long sort of spindly stem. But definitely if you have like, uh, yeah, like a mid-century modern, even just like a modern home, a yucca plant would be a nice touch. I'm actually on the hunt for a yucca tree I'm just looking for the right one because I don't have the patience to grow it from a young buck. Did I add mycorrhizal inoculants to this? Did you guys see? It doesn't really smell like my goat, so I'm just gonna add more. And I'm also going to be um, putting one of these aerial roots in the substrate and then I'm gonna put the top aerial root in the hole, I think. 
This is the top aerial root right here. This is the lower one, which I'll stick into the substrate if I don't break it. And then this one will go in side the zip code. I feel like it needs to face this way more because I think the other aerial roots are gonna start growing from right here. So maybe I won't stick this root in. I'll stick them both into the substrate and I will get the pole faced this way. Maybe I should stick this guy in here because he's kind of getting in the way. There we go, kind of like that. That's That works for me if it works for you. So let's get some substrate and a question. Substrate and a question. And for an overrated plant, strawberry shake? I don't know, I don't really see the, I don't see the appeal of that plant. I've never liked it. It's always kind of looked a little sickly to me, like something was wrong with it, like a nutrient deficiency or like sunburn or bleaching or something. I don't know. It's just not for me, but you know, you like what you like. Don't listen to me. Next question is, difficult plants you find easy? I feel like you're asking this to the wrong person. I feel like the question should be, <laughs> easy plants you find difficult. Um, difficult plants you find easy. Pertusa, does that count? <laughs> I've seen some people say they struggle with a Pertusa. I mean, mine back here isn't like, super big and majestic like a really really mature pertusa but i mean it's growing and the leaves are like a decent size so pertusa um tree fern fiber pole i mean i could do a soil pole too but soil poles get so messy like my my escaletto that's in a soil pole right now is like super messy anytime i move it it just like all comes spilling out but I don't really want to do a moss pole. Have you rooted Hoyas in tree fern fiber? If so, do it and thank me later. Well, dang, no, I haven't. I actually have a Thomsonia that I'm trying to get some roots on right now. It's just in, um, I think it's in tree fern fiber. Maybe I'll move it to, um, oh. <laughs> move it to tree fern fiber. Yes, I am, I do then. I do have a plant that um, I'm rooting in tree fern fiber, but I can't say that I've had any results yet because it's I only got it in there last I think last week. So I will let you know how it goes, but it's good to know that someone has had good experience rooting a Hoya in tree fern fiber. And thank you for the tip. This is a I guess a planty personal question. Um, is it's, do you feel pressured to keep as many plants as you have because of YouTube? And do you experience plant burnout? Yes. Yes and yes. For one, I definitely experience plant burnout. Just because like, I give advice on this um, channel and I kind of tell you what like my normal care methods are, doesn't necessarily mean that that's what I do every single time. Like, you know, I have a life too. I'm not just constantly doing plant stuff. I sort of, especially now, I'm just kind of doing it when I have time. And I really try and film my planning days around things that like have to get done now, which is why I really like the week of series because I do get a lot done during that time. But yeah, I definitely get plant burnout. There's some times like, especially like in the past years where I like wouldn't even want to see my plants. Like it would like, stress me out and I feel like it was more of a burden to have plants and there was a time where I felt like I just didn't want to do it anymore but I was in a really bad um, headspace with my mental health during this time and I kind of felt like why am I trying to keep all of these plants alive when I can barely keep myself alive um, and yeah, I got rid of a lot of plants. I literally went from having, like during that time, this was in 2019, I went from having maybe like a hundred, like a hundred-ish plants to maybe like 40. I cut down a lot 
and I sort of spent more time taking care of myself, going to therapy and focusing more on like like work and stuff and illustrating. But yeah, I still I still go through plant burnout. And it's something that I was worried about initially when I started YouTube. I was like, what if I what if I like hate plants after I start this YouTube? Like what if it's just become something that is like a chore? But it's actually been the opposite. I've I've learned to like love my plants more with this YouTube channel and like being able to like share things with you guys and then also like have conversations with you about like your experiences with these same plants. So yeah, in that way it's been nice, but I I have times where I'm like if things are like if everything is dry or I'm seeing like plants that are dying or I have fucking some kind of pest, like there are times where I'm like I'm just going to throw it away. And I I've, I've gotten to that point before and have just, you know, off camera, off socials, just, whoa, throw shit away that's, like, stressing me out, primarily with pests. Um, and I don't think that you should feel guilty if you, like, take a break from plants. I think that, like, a thing that you should constantly do, and it's something that I'm constantly doing, too, is just checking your collection, like, getting rid of the ones that you've held on to for so long because you've had it for so long and you feel guilty getting rid of it, um, learning to let go of those ones, um, learning to let go of the plants that you don't like, you're not obsessed with, that you don't love, um, so that, you know, you really are just spending your time with the plants that you care about. This shit is crooked and it's bothering me. Okay, we're just going to leave it, but now I'm stalling because I don't know what to fill this pull with. My gut is saying tree fern fiber. But at the same time, it's like that it's gonna fall out too. Moss is by far the easiest substrate to use um, with any kind of moss pole, I feel, but whatever. Let's just go with tree fern fiber. But I am gonna fill moss a little or fill soil a little bit higher. So yeah, plant burnout is definitely real. And during those times, I do the absolute bare minimum. Anyone that is stressing me out in the moment, I just deal with it, whether that means giving it to someone or chucking it. It's your it's your plant. Like I truly don't get why people get so like bothered about what people do with their own shit. Like why does that affect you so much what I do with my plants? It's not like I'm going into your house and throwing away your plants, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I just find it weird. So do what your heart tells you, do what your gut tells you. It's nobody's fucking business but your own. Um, and then with YouTube, I do feel, I do feel the pressure to keep a lot of plants with YouTube. Not so much just like the quantity of plants that I have, but like in terms of like propagations I take or like experiments, um, you know, I'll take a prop and I'll give it away and then <laughs> there's gonna be people that comment like hey like do you have an update on this prop like um, you know they're just wondering if they should use the same substrate or they just want to see the progression on it so in that sense I do feel this like sense of obligation to keep a lot of the plants that I'm working with on YouTube so that I'm able to give updates and stuff but it's not feasible for me to just like keep 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 and not get rid of stuff too um so yeah the answer is yes but i'm trying to like get a good balance of that and if there's a plant that i really want to get rid of that like i was gonna give people an update on then you know i'll include it on my youtube like hey i'm getting rid of this plant like i just did with my jose bono not my jose bono but my friend's jose bono and um said say sayonara you're not gonna see it on this channel anymore because i'm giving it back so, yeah, trying to get good at that. This is actually working um, pretty well with this soil mix because I didn't make it as chunky as my other one. She's cute. Now I'm gonna um, fill the top with, I was gonna do moss, but I, I think I'm gonna do fur bark. This next question is sort of like along the same lines and this one is, do you ever get tired of making plant videos? 
I will say that there are some days and I have a lot of these days where the thought of filming a plant video is just the last thing that I would want to do on this earth and that's kind of the reason why I started taking one Wednesday off. It's not because like, I mean, yeah, I need the time to like decompress and like take a day for myself. But I, truly, I end up working as just as much anyway, but I'm just not so pressured to put out a video. Um, but I've given myself that like one Wednesday off just in case I have one of those days inevitably where I'm like, no, I don't want to film today. I don't want to film touch any plants today. I just don't want to do it. So yeah, I, I definitely do sometimes get tired of making plant videos because there's sometimes like I go through months where I feel like everything I'm putting out is the same or it's like redundant or it's boring and like I don't feel like super good about the video I put out and I don't know I think part of that is just the fact that I'm just like always so crucial of myself but yeah I, I don't know I'm not gonna say which videos they are but I feel like it's pretty obvious in some videos where I'm like kind of forcing myself to put on a uh, put on a, like my game face and film a video. There hasn't been very many because I've gotten into like I've gotten into a good swing and good routine and I actually like am doing stuff now that like is good for me mentally. Like I'm actually starting to take lunches and like detach from work. Um, I'm reading more. I'm going to sleep earlier. I'm doing self-care stuff more. So Mentally, I'm in a better place, but definitely like since the start of this YouTube channel, I've had certain points where I'm like, no, no, over it. Don't want to film, don't want to touch my plants. Don't even want to think about it. I think that's natural with anything. Like if you're doing something so often, like two plant videos a week is kind of a lot if you think about it. And I seriously, I get like a good amount of requests for people who like want me to start a Patreon, but I'm, can't do it. I can't do it. I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't feel good about the whole thing about like you have to charge people to watch it. Like I know like it's not for nothing. Like I have to work for it still, but I just don't know if it's something that I would enjoy doing. And even if I did, like... I already struggle to figure out what the heck I'm going to be posting on here twice a week, let alone have a Patreon where you have to pay for some to like watch something. I don't know. Anyway, um, here is the finished elbow. I'm pretty happy with her. I think she's going to transition just fine, hopefully. And we're going to keep our fingers crossed for some fenestrations. Still kind of have a long way to go. Let's do this Escaletto first. I'm gonna do this Ripsalis last because I think I might have to like get on the floor for this one. It's a big boy. Okay, let's just empty out this soil from this Escaletto. This question is, what makes a plant rare? A plant that is rare is a plant that is like literally not in cultivation or um, you can't find it like on Equigenera or Tropical Plants or they're not like always popping up in purges. I feel like a good amount of people in the hobby associate um, a rare plant with the price. And while that's true in some cases, like obviously a rare plant is not gonna be like hella cheap, but just because a plant is expensive does not make it rare like the spirit of sancti it's definitely way more affordable now than it was before but it's still pricey but it's not a rare plant like you can literally go online and google like where to buy one and you can find one and have it shipped to you like tomorrow um but there are plants that are like i don't know like the sp's um philodendron sp silver angel which is like the philodendron el guapo but it has like that really pinkish emergent leaf and this the leaves are super super silvery i've never seen one in person because it's rare so that's what i would consider a rare plant or like a hybrid that 
has only been made by like a certain grower and he he or she or they have not like released this hybrid to the public and are only growing it themselves or like two friends and stuff. Ooh, those roots look bad. Crud. Shit and crud. Crud. I didn't realize that there were some rotty roots on here and I just dumped it into my new soil bin. So yeah, that's what I would consider rare. I will tell you that I don't have a single rare plant in my collection, like actually rare. Everything that I have, you can find with Equigenera, you can find in a purge, you can find through a seller on Instagram. I don't have any um, rare plants. I have some plants that maybe are a bit more expensive um, if you buy it from, from someone, but I don't have anything rare. So that's what I consider rare. So I want to give Fern a cutting that has roots on it. I could give her this this leaf too because it has a root, but I really wanted to give her like um, this one or this one, like a really big one, a big hefty one. But at the same time, I don't know which box I'm going to put it in, so I don't think I can really give her like a massive cutting. Plus, I'm still giving her an extra cutting that I'm not showing you guys. So I have to be able to fit everything in this box. Plus the heat pack, because it's freaking cold here still. So I feel like it's cold everywhere right now. It was like snowing in California, which is mad. Oh, sorry, I'm answering questions. Um, have you ever received a plant that you didn't want? Yes, I have. I'm not gonna like get into the details because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But I definitely have gotten plants that I didn't want before. And um, I can be a very sentimental person. So for that reason, I did not throw it away, but I just didn't display the plant. I would just keep it either like in my office or tucked away somewhere in my bedroom <laughs> that I couldn't see it all the time. And yeah, I would just keep it because it's, you know, it's like a gift from someone and I do try my best to keep it alive. I don't kill them on purpose. I did kill one of the plants that was a gift that I didn't want, but it was a very, very thoughtful, sweet gift from someone extremely dear to me. Um, I, I really did try and keep that one alive, but it unalived itself, unfortunately. Or maybe I unalived it, I don't know what. It's probably me. But it wasn't on purpose. But yes, I that I have been in that situation before, and I think the... I think the hardest part about that, it, it's just like getting any other gift that like you don't want, that's like clearly not like your style or whatever. It's like kind of like acting like you like it, you know, like on Christmas when you get a gift from an aunt who like does not know your style at all. And then she's like, try it on, try it on. <laughs> and you have to do a little fashion show in front of all your aunts and it's kind of it's kind of the same thing so but I don't throw them away I really don't um, but I will tell you right now if you write me a birthday card or like get me a Christmas card it's going in the trash <laughs> the only one I've kept really in the last few years is the one I got from Alice because it said um, it was like this sweet message blah 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 and then it goes um, and today is your birthday. Don't ever forget that. <laughs> Thank you, Alice. It's very kind of you. So anyway, this, oh, this root system is just horrible. Pudge, please, it was just me. And I really want to give her a fat, juicy leaf, but I think I'm going to give her the leaf that has this little root system on it so it would be this cutting right here or what do I want to do I'm having a dilemma here how about we cut here because I already have a root system up there it's 
So I could give her this top cutting or I could also give her this bottom cutting because it has roots. Look, it has roots. She's gonna be like, what the frick, Charmaine? Why did you give me an entire plant? How am I gonna fit this in a box? What on earth? And like the nodes are so effing tight down here that like it's nearly impossible to cut. I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I think I'll chop this top cutting again and start over. Man, I was doing so well and then I just let it go. Oh well. I think I can give her this cutting. How about that? There's like two solid nodes, a root system, and like some really cute leaves. How about that? Yeah, okay, so that will be ferns, and then I will keep these for myself. Now, um, let's work on ferns first. I'm gonna give hers a little wash down, and just make sure everything is nice and clean and pest free, because the last thing I wanna do is give fern any pests. Okay, the next few questions are like Instagram related slash, I guess, plant community related and I feel like I already answered one of these in a video. Maybe it was a collab video with Alice. Can't quite remember, but I'll, I'll go through it briefly. Um, so the first question is how do you, oh no, I just threw my dry microfiber cloth into a soily trash can. Not a good combination. I am trying to be clean, it's not working. My husband is gonna be home anytime now. <sighs> Sniffles McGee over there. If he does come home, I might have to like do this Ripsalis off camera and just kind of show you guys how it ends up because I'm not dealing with that. So anyway, um, how do you grow on Instagram? Um, I guess I should start by how I started. So I didn't make a plant Instagram to like, I don't know, become an influencer or whatever. I was posting plant stuff already on my personal um, Instagram and <laughs> didn't seem like people were interested in that. So I was like starting to feel like a little bit of a like nuisance on people's feeds. So I just made a new Instagram and was like, hey, if you are into plants, I'll be posting, the, I'll be posting all my plant stuff on here and um, just kind of used it as a way to like document the growth of my plants and sort of document my space with the plants because it was changing all the time. And um, I never even realized like how big of a community there was and like um, how many people would even want to follow me. So I started my plant Instagram in 2020 um, obviously I had been into plants before that, but because I was like really, really getting into it, I wanted to post about it more. So yeah, I made that plant Instagram. And then I started like literally just like going on the hashtag and kind of seeing like who are some cool accounts to follow. So I followed like apartment therapy, I followed Hilton Carter, I followed um, Summer Rain Oaks, I followed um, Plants Arena. Uh, who else? Amanda Ray Wright was another one I followed. I followed Daryl, Houseplant Journal. And yeah, I, I kind of just, I didn't really like engage with them a lot, but I was just kind of seeing like what they were doing and like the kind of like content that um, were allowing them to like reach a lot of people. So I just started documenting my plants like crazy. Even if like nobody was like reading my captions or nobody was really even following me, I still did it. I still just like posted about the stuff that worked for me, some of the stuff that I was learning. I don't know, it kind of just like grew from there. I think a big part of like why I was able to like grow my Instagram, I guess, is because for one, I like live in a really nice building and keep in mind, I'm a renter, I don't own. Yeah, I'm not trying to claim like, oh yeah, I've like I bought this beautiful house. No, I like rented this beautiful house that I can't afford. And so it was nice to like have like the backdrop of like the water and like, you know, the, like the interior of the house. So that definitely helped. And then I do have like experience with photography and photo editing and stuff. So 
it definitely helped that I kind of already had that sense of like how to, I guess, curate my feed to look a certain kind of way. Um, and then also just kind of like following the hashtags and not, um, like not engaging superficially. Like I only went on hashtags and liked photos from that hashtag of photos that I actually liked. People that were like really like using their Instagram as like a way to document their plants. I wasn't liking, you know, people that were just like selling plants or people that were just like spamming other people's photos on their pages. Um, I wanted it to be like genuine engagement. So yeah, it kind of like started that way. And I honestly can't even tell you how I got from that point to where I am now. It kind of just like snowballed and yeah. I don't know but I didn't like I definitely didn't like start my Instagram with the idea like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna be a plant influencer or I'm gonna grow my Instagram and make a YouTube like I did not have that plan at all I was like in the depths of like starting this business not starting the business but I was in the depths of my business like trying to get it off the ground you know like trying to like freaking pay my bills so at that time I wasn't thinking like oh I'm gonna be doing this at the same time like it was really just a way for me to like compartmentalize my life and feel like I had something else to rely on in terms of like a hobby or just like something that would occupy my time because I didn't have friends here of my own um, I just I started all over again so like the plant Instagram thing was a way for me to like connect with people outside of my husband circle and just kind of create something of my own so that's kind of how it started and i i don't i'm sorry i don't have like a formula of like this is what you have to do in in order to like get people to follow you and whatever like i don't know i'm not like i'm really not that good at it like there are people who started like doing this plant instagram thing um after me and have way bigger followings than I do. So I feel like you should ask them, not me. I'm just, I just really have done the same thing. Take photos of my plants, edit the way that I like to edit it and post a caption and then I post it. I try and use somewhat of like, I guess popular hashtags or, pop, or hashtags that are actually related to my photo. I don't like to spam the hashtags using it just cause it's popular but it has nothing to do with the photo. Like one of my pet peeves is like when someone will post a photo of a certain plant but then they'll hashtag like 10 different other kinds of plants that are popular at the time at the moment because then it's like you go to that hashtag and you have all these random freaking photos of things that are not that and it's just annoying so i guess my only advice would be be genuine engage for real for real and not with the intention of just like oh i want you to like engage back with me or follow me back or something um, like you'll notice that I don't follow a lot of people. I really only follow like a small handful. Just have fun with it. Don't like, don't stress about it too much. Just post, post your plants, edit the way you want to edit, write whatever captions you want or write no captions at all. Um, Instagram is just a great way of documenting the growth of your plants. So um, I think I'm going to do ferns plant in tree fern fiber. What a pun. This is the pot that I'm going to use. I'm using the square pot with uh, drainage holes because I think she uses drainage. Why do I have to find them? And then I obviously need to decorate the pot with some smiley faces first. I don't even remember what I was talking about. I swear I have like the memory span of Dory these days. Um, oh yeah, how to grow your Instagram and then how do I edit my Instagram photos? This is a video that I've been wanting to do forever. I don't know why it seems like such a daunting task though. Like I do these three freaking hour week of videos. I do these four hour long repot videos, but I can't film a video that will literally take me like 15 minutes. Like it would be like a five minute video tops and maybe like overall filming of like maybe half an hour at most, like 20 minutes. But I can't get myself to do it. It just seems like it's too difficult. It's really annoying. But that is coming. I'm not going to tell you guys right now because it's kind of a lot. But I am planning on releasing my first YouTube short, whatever the hell that is, of how I 
edit my video or how I edit my photos from beginning to end because that is my most frequently asked question other than where do you get your glass vessels. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll post soon about that, I promise. It's gonna happen this year. How did you make friends in the plant community? Um, Facebook. Facebook, uh, there's like a local Facebook group that Jing is the admin of. I just joined it on a whim. A friend that I met through Instagram recommended that I join this group. And I was like, yeah, they've got like a couple hundred members and like people are always posting like cool plants. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll give it a try. Even though like I wasn't really the type to engage in Facebook groups, but it was a really, really tight knit small group at the time. There was when I joined, there was like 600 of us. I did get into some drama in my first, I think it was my first month, or maybe first few months that I was in that group. Got into a little bit of drama, which I talked about in this video in full detail. Um, so if you're curious about that. And yeah, I just like, I don't know, I got, I went out of my little bubble and I started like, interacting with people's posts and like feeling out different names and like who had the same sense of humor as me and who like you know who I could vibe with the most so yeah that's how I got pretty much most of my friends and then um Alice specifically she I met her through marketplace which is funny I was I was propagating a ton of micans I feel like me and one other person were like one of the only people really to have like access not access but we were one of the only ones in our area that had like a big micans that we could take propagations from to like give it to everybody or sell it to everybody which we did and um yeah i i would sell them on marketplace every single week and they would sell like freaking hot cakes and Alice was one of the people who bought from me. And yeah, she was just like really cool. Like I met so many people. I can't even remember how many Mikeins I sold on a marketplace during that time. But like, I don't know, Alice was just like really cool from the beginning. And like I could like vibe with her right away. And then she added me on Instagram not long after. And then we set up our first trade. And yeah, the rest is kind of history, but I was talking to her recently and maybe I think we got this on camera too where I was like what was our first like hangout outside of like facilitating a plant trade like when did we make plans to just like hang out with each other one on one because the first time we met each other in person to do our trade we both had our partners with us I think sort of as security um, but yeah at some point obviously we would have had to just like hang out together and I can't remember the details of it, but I don't remember ever having like an interaction with her where it was awkward because I feel like if our first one-on-one -on -one hangout was awkward, we probably wouldn't be as close as we are now because um, I have definitely um, hung out with people here like that I made friends with, I guess that like we just didn't vibe, like we didn't hit it off and then we just like we never really hung out after that. But yeah, if that was like the case with Alice, I don't think we would have like been like, hey, wanna hang out again <laughs> if it was like an awful experience the first time. But yeah, it's really just Facebook, like your local Facebook group. I don't mean like, like if you live in Washington, don't join like a Washington plant group. You have to join one that's like in your city or like in your like vicinity. Cause like that's really the only way you're gonna make like local plant friends that you can like see all the time and trade with and hang out with. I'm not gonna say to make friends on Marketplace because that's kind of weird. <laughs> Honestly, it, it is kind of weird. I feel like me and Alice was like a very one-off situation, but I, the only thing I can say is um, Facebook, a Facebook group because that's how I made pretty much all of my friends locally. And I'm very thankful for that because um, like obviously I love my friends here in terms of like my friends that I met through my husband because you know He's got a ton of friends and I met you know all their All of them plus their partners and whatever like I have a lot of friends here, but it's nice that I have 
um, a group of friends and like a community that's like mine. That it's like my husband is not like not a part of it at all. It's like my friends, my friendships, and like I have my own little world here now. And that's been like probably the most special thing to me. It's definitely made me feel more at home. So I highly recommend putting yourself out there. I know that it can be like really scary, especially if you have social anxiety. I feel like a lot of plant people are introverts. Am I wrong? Even at plant events and stuff, I'm a little bit more, um, I would say extroverted because I feel comfortable with like the community of people that I surround myself with, I guess. But like, if you put me in the middle of a party, just a random party, I am going to curl up like a hermit. Like I will literally retreat into my own soul and you'll never see me. You'll never see me, you'll never hear from me. Maybe let's get through all of the rest of the plant questions. And then if I have time, I'll get to the rest of the um, personal questions. Any recommendations on easy care indoor trees? Hi, Burley. Burley's my best friend slash sister. Easy indoor trees, Dracaena marginata. Um, the only reason I rotted that was because <laughs> before I went on a trip, um, I like literally pulled, poured like a bucket of water in there. It was during summer. I was like, this thing is so thirsty because the, the soil was way too um, aerated. The, it just was not dense enough. And I knew that it was gonna dry out like a prune while I was gone. So I literally dumped like a whole bucket of water in there and I was like, see ya. And then I left for three weeks and yeah, that was bad. So, but it's been really, really low maintenance um, besides that. I'll say another like easy one, in my opinion, is the uh, burgundy, the ficus, oh, you can't see it. Ficus elastica burgundy. Um, that's a good one. I'm trying to imagine your house because Verly has like a beautiful house. She lives in a mansion. <laughs> she has a fat house. I'm trying to, like honestly, I would love to see like a fiddly fig in your house, Verly. Um, but they can be kind of, they can be kind of a biatch. And I think that you live in a really thrippy area and thrips freaking love fiddly figs, so maybe not that one. Um, you can also do a yucca tree. Like a yucca would be nice, but like we're talking like a big yucca. Like don't get like one of those little dinky ones from Ikea, like a really big yucca. Not gonna recommend Bird of Paradise. I don't have a lot of luck growing that one. Um, a Chinese fan palm or like a Mexican, I think it's called a Mexican fan palm would be really cool, but with kids i would not recommend it it's very very spiky and pokey and it's a painful plant to own so yeah pretty much rubber tree um dracaena so any kind of dracaena or like a yucca a yucca tree and i would say a corn plant's like one of the easiest but i don't think you'll like that only a higher power knows at this point um how i'm going to actually ship this to her like this, like obviously I, I, I have some polyfill that I think I'll like set on the top and like tape it down. And then I'll also maybe take some like, um, the way that, uh, is it Equigenera? The way Equigenera does it and like puts like paper around each leaf and like I'll pack more polyfill in there. But I just need to find a box that this is gonna go in and just find a way that I can get it to her safely. But it's not gonna be a fun time, it's really not. Now I have my Escaletto. My back is actually legit killing me right now. I don't know if I want to grow this in soil. It's kind of yucky in soil. I don't know about it. I don't know how I'm feeling about this Escaletto in soil. I mean, it was like compacted in that tiny little vessel for way too long. So that was one issue, but I'm just not really liking these roots. I could do, you know what I think I'll do? I'll do like a tree fern fiber mix with the soil. That's, I've had like pretty decent luck with the few plants that I've done that with. And then I think I'm just gonna put it in here and then I'm just gonna like water prop this one for now because it's uh, it's nothing. I can't, I can't stick it in there like that. What color variegation do you like most and least? I think the variegation color that I like most 
I think it's the elbow, honestly. Not like the Monstera elbow specifically, but like like white variegation because when it sort of overlays on green, it makes that sort of like milky green color, like that light sea foamy green color sometimes. And it's just so beautiful. Um, and I think the variegation color that I like least is yellow. But it's weird because my philodendron Florida Beauty has yellow variegation, but it sort of like starts yellowish, but then it turns sometimes white or it turns more green. But I'm in general, I'm not a huge fan of yellow variegation. Plant trend of the past, present, and future. Um, past plant trend. Um, I think that one like really obvious trend that we have sort of seen come and go is the um, the philodendron gloriosum thing, like all the different forms. Uh, like the philodendron gloriosum zebra was like a huge thing for a while when it started becoming more popular. So that was one. And then in terms of a present trend, I think right now a super trendy plant is um, any kind of Lux hybrid. I feel it. I feel like it sort of just like came out of nowhere. It was weird because the first Lux hybrid I had ever seen, I mean, it was probably somewhere on Instagram, but I would have just sort of like scrolled past it. But it was really when I became friends with Amanda because, you know, she's had her Lux hybrids for a while and I was always just like in awe of hers and she was I don't know and then all of a sudden it just like freaking took off like crazy and I feel like everybody had a Lux hybrid I don't know like I don't know it happened so suddenly I don't know if anyone else feels the same way but I feel like right now like the big thing are the Lux hybrids and then um a future plant trend I think one that I can see sort of happening is like this sort of vining plant thing, like plants that grow like a weed, sort of like the Dioscoria. I can see that becoming a little bit more trendy in the future. It's not like a huge thing right now. Um, and I think that's because like not a lot of people are selling them. Like you really have to like look for it. And there's not, and even if they are for sale, there's not many varieties that are like easily available but I think that that could be something in the future that could be really really um sort of trendy and popular um did you cut off your Hoya flower um I posted this thing on my story a few days ago and it's the first actually no it's the second time a Hoya has gotten has flowered for me and if you didn't know this about me, I absolutely despise Hoya blooms. I think they are vile and disgusting. Like, I don't like the way they look at all. Essentially, it's the clustering of them and like how they're so perfectly symmetrical. Like, I literally have goosebumps just thinking about it. It triggers my trypophobia. I don't like Hoya blooms. I don't like them when they're closed. I don't like them when they're open. They freak me the hell out. So. One of my Hoyas um, I noticed had a little bloom starting and I posted about it on my story and saying I was gonna chop it off and it was like disgusting. I'll throw a photo of it here. No, I did not chop it off because people were like, it's so cute when it opens, trust me, like you'll wanna wait for it. It's like really fuzzy and adorable. So I've kept it, some of them have opened and it freaked me, it just freaking grosses me out. So far, not good, I don't like it, but I didn't chop it off because people said to leave it and to give it a chance. So here I am, okay? Don't say that I never listen to anyone or that I'm hard-headed or I don't ever like take advice from other people. I do, I really do, even if it makes me uncomfortable. So she's still on there. There are two other peduncles that look like they're starting to wake up. Not on my watch. Um, I should get this on a pole right away, but the only thing is like, I don't know where the new growth is going to come out of. I mean, my guess is it's probably going to come out of this auxiliary bud on this, on this leaf, but like, I don't know where to position it because like the growth could like start coming out that way or coming up this way. I don't know. Um, 
And I don't want to like get a pull. No. Stop making excuses. Just do it. Just freaking. Just freaking do it. I think I'm going to do a regular pull instead of a lazy pull. So yeah, I didn't chop it off. It's still with me. But the second all of them opens and I can confirm to, to you that I hate it, it's getting chopped off. I hate it. Don't like it. How do you make lazy poles more sturdy for bigger plants? Um, I mentioned this in another video that I don't actually like to use lazy poles for bigger plants. Like I would never put like my big monstera on a lazy pole. I would want to use like a proper pole like this. Um, I like to use a lazy pole for like smaller plants or plants that are just getting started. Like I would love to use a lazy pole for this. I'm just too lazy to move all this crap to get my lazy pole stuff, which is why I'm opting for this. Um, but if you did want to use a lazy pole for a larger plant, it's not impossible. You could totally do it, but you're going to need, um, either a wood plank or, um, like a bamboo stick. And if you're going to use a bamboo stick, you're probably going to need two or three to put on the back. So like, let's say the curve is like this, right? You'll need one to put in the back and then on the sides as well. And you just attach it to the, to the plastic and it's like pretty much as secure as a pole like this but it's a lot of work just to get it secure which is why i would just much rather use a pre-made pole another thing you can do is add yeah a wooden plank so not a bamboo stick but like a thicker plank and you would just add the plank to the back and secure it using some kind of zip tie and yeah it like should be pretty secure so that's my only recommendation, but honestly, I'm not using lazy poles for like big plants. Any Ethereum on a moss pole, is it possible? Have you ever tried it before? Um, yes, it's possible because there are Ethereum that are, you know, epiphytes. They grow, they're like, like the pendant leaf Ethereum, like Politiflorum, the Vichii is another one, Oroquianum. All of those um, you can grow up a pole and you can actually see some robust growth growing it on a pole. A good um, example of this to show you would be uh, Tyler's page and I will um, link his Instagram in the description. I would just like scour his page. His are huge freaking mungus. I'm not even exaggerating when I say humongous. I mean like some of his Ethereum are like larger than my whole entire body. And he's he's like, oh, I got this like a year ago. Freaking guy. Uh, so yeah, it is possible. But I have not actually latched a um, Ethereum onto a pole successfully before. I've never, I think I actually have, um, no, I don't have any Ethereum on uh, a pole at the moment. No experience in that field. If you had to eat a plant, which one would you choose and why? Which one looks the most delicious? Oh, I love this question. I feel like it would be one of my Hoyas because they're so juicy and fat and so Oh, no. Oh, uh, no. Sorry, I have a lot of like answers swirling through my brain. But I love this question because I always like, I don't know, I always express my love for a plant by saying I want to like crumple it up and stuff it into my mouth. It's like cute aggression. Hmm. Honestly, my first thought was the Sinindia leucotrica because it's like so fuzzy and delicious. But at the same time, it's like, I feel like the texture of that in your mouth would not be very enjoyable. So maybe not that one. I'm just trying to like go through my collection in my brain. Honestly, probably. <laughs> I know this might be weird, but probably my Uliarum Dunburnsii, like the new leaves are so sultry and like velvety and like they've got this sheen to it that makes it look really pillowy, but it's not. And it, I just, yeah, I just want to crumple it. And just pop it into my mouth. I have been filming for so long. What time is it? Oh my gosh, it's six o'clock. I think I've been filming for f five hours. I guess we'll see when I upload it. This might be the longest repot and chat I have ever posted and maybe the longest repot and chat on YouTube. I feel like there should be award, like YouTube awards for like setting records. I've gotta have beat at least one of them. 
Which Strappy Anthurium is easiest slash can live outside a cabinet? Honestly, any of them. Um, again, Tyler is a really good Instagram account to follow because he grows a lot of his Anthurium outside of um, greenhouse conditions. And um, also Amanda Ray Wright. Amanda Ray Wright is another really good um, in, or person to follow because she she's the person that I first saw had an Ethereum guitar folium. It's the person that influenced me to get one. Um, and I think she also has a Politiflorum growing outside a uh, greenhouse cabinet. I've seen lots of people grow like the Friedrich Stallii outside a greenhouse cabinet. The Pendens, um, Morona. You can honestly, like, I'm convinced that you can grow any Anthurium, any Strappy, and not any Anthurium, any Strappy Anthurium outside of a greenhouse. I haven't really heard of one that's like notoriously difficult to grow in terms of like humidity and temperature requirements. I could be wrong, like I could just be like having like like a brain fart right now and like maybe when I'm editing this I'll be like, oh yeah, that's freaking Anthurium, but there's none, there, none, <laughs> there's none that come to mind at the moment. I've had good luck growing the guitar folium in non-greenhound, green, I think my brain is like, we're done, we're done. Stop filming, you can't talk anymore. Vitarifolium is really the only, oh, Vitarifolium and the Pendulifolium are the only two strap leaf anthuriums that I've grown outside of a greenhouse. I would say, I guess, successfully. I also have my Winlingeri outside of greenhouse conditions. It is rooting, it's pushing out a new leaf. The new leaf has not really taken a beating at all. She looks almost exactly the way she did when I got her. And this one, the mother plant of this one is also living in non-greenhouse conditions and it's a massive, massive specimen. I will say though, like specifically with the Vitarifolium that um, it grows significantly slower outside of a greenhouse because I had one Vitarifolium that started pretty much as a seedling and I grew it inside of my greenhouse pretty much up until the day that it outgrew it. And it grew really, really fast and it was growing super long, strappy, like perfect leaves. And then the second I took it out, um, you know, we had a little bit of issues and it slowed down a lot in growth. And now like if I can get one leaf every like five months, I'm lucky. Whereas before it was like pushing a new leaf almost every, I don't know, every two, three weeks or something, every two weeks. Heck. Where the heck is my husband? Um, I'm also gonna be filling this with tree fern fiber. I need a smaller spoon though. I can't believe it's almost six o'clock. I ate lunch before I filmed this and now I need to go cook dinner. What on earth? It's gonna be dark outside. It was so sunny and bright when I retreated into this cave. Oh, by the way, I'm using the same um, tree fern fiber soil mix on this one since the roots weren't great either, but I have confidence that this will be a good mix to get it back on its feet. I don't really film my poles all the way. Um, I guess you could because it's easier to maintain. Uh, I just don't like to use that much substrate at once if I can help it. All right, this one is done. Yay. We are now seated for the grand finale. I don't know which question I want to answer next. I still have like some questions left, but I could probably save that for another repot and chat since I still have plenty more to repot. But um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is this kind of weird thing. So I was approached by a company, a reputable company, a travel company specifically that um, basically offers to coordinate these trips for influencers, whatever. So you can like customize your trip, they do all the planning for you, there's like a million bajillion destinations, and you essentially choose like <clears throat> how many people you want on this trip, 
what the activities are going to look like, how many days you'll be gone, blah, blah, blah. And it's really cool because if I were to pick a trip, like obviously I'd love to choose somewhere in like South America or somewhere tropical where we can like look at all these like plants that we, you know, are keeping captive in our home you know, out in the wild. Um, the only thing is that like, I feel weird. <laughs> I feel the like, concept is really cool. Like to be able to curate a trip, like let's say me plus 10 other people that choose to come with me, um, to be able to curate a trip and like do things that we're all actually interested in together. It's not like we're just going to like go sightseeing and, um, you know, go to cooking classes, like stuff that we're not interested in. Like I would definitely want to cater it to like be centered around plants and uh yeah that would be really cool but i feel really really strange about basically like selling these trips that you go on with me and basically like asking you to like spend money to like go on a trip with me like i don't know it feels weird it feels strange it also feels sort of like the wrong time. This is not gonna work out. This is way too small. Um, it also like feels like the wrong time because we're sort of like at the cusp of this recession that's about to hit, right? And everyone is like struggling to even buy groceries and make ends meet. And here I am like, oh, let's go on a trip and spend, well, spend $2,000 on flights and whatever to like come hang out with me. I don't know, the concept is really cool and like there are definite like tropical places that I would love to visit, especially with like some of you guys that you know, we're all into the same thing. Cause if I took like my husband with me, like I go oh, look at that and he'd be like, oh yeah, cool, another plant. But again, I just feel weird about asking people to spend money essentially to hang out with me. Messy, messy Jesse. Soil is all over me. So anyway, yeah, it's something that like I've sort of been considering because it seems pretty cool and there's like other like I guess creators, like content creators that have worked and partnered with this company and the trips that they've curated and like gone on with some people that follow them. Like, I don't know, it looked really fun and like something that I would like to do, but also at the same time, I'm super introverted and I feel like, let's say if I planned like a th even a three day trip, I feel like by like after the first day, I would be socially spent. For example, like when I hang out with Alice, who's like my best friend, even after we hang out, we take long breaks between seeing each other because it like just takes it out of us. Any kind of socialization really, I'm like, Okay, I need to like recharge my battery. Just realized you can't see anything. Perfect. I didn't even look at the viewfinder to make sure you could see. You didn't see any of that, great. It's been something that I've been thinking about and I really don't like work with a lot of companies or I don't do a lot of collaborations, but this one just seems so interesting, especially if we could like visit a place that would just like blow our minds, but you know, I have a lot of anxiety. I get travel anxiety. I don't like being away from home. I get really sick if I like, I don't know, eat any foods or anything that's like not my normal. I'm just like wondering if like we go on this trip and then I end up getting sick and I'm just like miserable the whole time and I'm like in bed and <laughs> everyone's like in a different country. Yeah, the more I talk about this, the less it makes sense but I've definitely been thinking about it. I just don't know if I'm like the right person for this kind of thing because I'm so introverted and I have so many anxieties, especially around traveling, that I think it would just be a terrible time for like everyone. Maybe I could keep this guy with my other plant and sell this one and not try and take it apart. I was kind of thinking of like mixing this soil with my new soil to repot it, but there's so many like dead leaves in here. I don't know if I want to do it. It's a very, very sandy mix. There's like a lot, like a lot of sand in here. And it's weird because 
It's actually not even that like, there's not even that many amendments, but I feel like it wasn't taking in moisture for some reason. Hmm. Really strange. Okay, so let's not do anything with that. Oh, my lanta. I'm gonna attempt to put my plant in this little guy. Oh, here's one that we can talk about actually. Anthurium naming convention. Some people are giving the same crosses different cool names or like unique names. Um, I've been kind of reading a few threads here and there about this and there was like one thread in particular that got really spicy. And essentially it was like, ow! pulling out splinters hurt so bad um it was essentially like one group of people saying that like if you're gonna name a hybrid cross that already exists you better be using the same name that's already out there Ow. and then there is the other side or like the other group of people who are like it's my freaking plant. I hybridized it. I'm gonna call it whatever the hell I want. <laughs> Meaning like, um, if you're confused about what I'm saying, like let's say somebody crosses a crystal, an Anthurium crystal and Anthurium magnificum. And they're like, this is the Anthurium shermanator. <laughs> and someone's like, what, what cross is it? And they're like, oh, it's a crystal in a bag. And they're like, well, that's an Anthurium crystal mag. Or someone crossed like, um, you know, like a hybrid that already exists, for example. A hybrid that's already out there, like an Ethereum Circus Peanuts or something. Damn it, my myco is so far. Is this how big I want my plant? Or do I, do I want to take back a little tiny bit more? Like, am I going to regret getting rid of so much of it? Maybe. Okay. Let's just take a little tiny bit. Not that my opinion matters at all, but I feel like if there's already a cross out there that exists and it's been given a name, um, I personally would just use that name because I feel like it makes it really confusing for like the community in general if there's like so many names being put out there and I feel like there already are and I'm like, like, isn't this a, a, like, isn't this an Ethereum Dark Phoenix or something? And there would be like a completely different name on it. So for the reason of just like everyone sort of trying to be on the same page or like even like selling reasons, I feel like the names should be, like we should all be on the same page about that and not just have anybody like throwing names out. But at the same time, like I really don't fucking care enough. I don't care enough to make an argument about it. Like if someone like makes a cross and they're like proud of it and they just want to call it after their name, like then do it. It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't affect me unless you're trying to like make like money off of it saying like this is a brand new hybrid. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. To me, it's like, who cares? Do whatever you want. I just like cringe so hard when um, hobbyists get so riled up in like debates about stuff like this, um, like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like these are some of the same people that like come on my channel and just like spew their bullshit. Like, why do you care? So like the, the passion that you have for like proving yourself to be like right about something, it's really sad. Like, can we all just like, do whatever the hell we want and have just peace. Like, isn't this supposed to be like a peaceful lobby? Aren't we all supposed to be like fucking zen or something? I don't know. So yeah, that's my, it's not really a hot take. Um, if I had to make like, like a this or that answer, I'll say, I guess, yeah, use the name that's already out there just for the reasons of not being confusing. But who cares what I think? I'm getting like kind of itchy. I don't know if it's because I keep getting poked by these things and it's like just irritating my skin or if like something is really making me itchy. 
Like I've repot, I've obviously I repotted this the first time and I didn't get itchy last time. Okay, here is my new plant, which I like, I'm gonna miss having such a big one, but this to me feels a lot better and I like that it's in a clear vessel now. I like that it's in no drainage and I'm just feeling really good about it. So what I'm gonna do, oh my word. What I'm gonna do is pot up this guy um, in a different vessel and I'm going to sell it and then I'll be able to use this for a crawler, which is so exciting because this is one of my favorite pots. I mentioned that I'm only using a uh, bag of soil every year, so <laughs> I really can't afford to give someone that much soil. So I'm gonna be reusing this, but I'm gonna like say to whoever um, I sell it to that I've used old soil, so they should like, if they wanna repot it or whatever, I'll just at least make them aware of it. I'm already sort of like getting towards halfway to my little bag and that's supposed to last me until the end of the year and it's looking, it's not looking good so far. I think because like last year it was fine, but this year so many of my plants are like getting a lot bigger in comparison to last year. So it might be harder to keep this goal, but I'm gonna try. All right, so I'm gonna try and squeeze it into this little pot here. Don't look at my camel toe. Ah, spilled soil everywhere. This is like the worst angle of all time. And now that all you're gonna do is stare at it. It's great. Then we will inoculate her. I'm like on the last of my TPS billions. I'm literally about to like send some billions to PO box over the border just so I can re-up on it because I am not going back home until July. I mean, I still have great white, but I've got this like weird attachment to my, my billions. I really, really am loving it a lot. I can't wait to just jump in the shower after this. I've never been so excited to take a shower and I hate taking a shower, but I feel really icky, especially since I didn't <laughs> take a shower after my run. I literally just washed my face and then I put makeup on and then I started filming because it was already getting late. Little did I know I was gonna be here till freaking seven o'clock. Jeez Louise. Okay, here is the second plant. It looks like it's bigger than mine. She's cute, but um, yeah, she's gotta go. Because she's too big. <sighs> okay, so is that it? Ow, my back. Oh God, it burns. Um, I think that's it. Like this has, this has literally felt and been the longest repot ever. My word. Um, but I hope that I answered most of the questions that you were wanting to hear about. There were still quite a few more, but um, I'm just going to keep them in my little notebook and save them for a future repot. Um, I think the next repot will be more planty and not, why do I look, why am I in this position? Sorry, my back hurts. Um, the next repot will be probably all planty questions and not personal questions. Because now that I have a vlog, I feel like I can talk a little bit more about those kinds of things on there. So yeah, see you later. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching another video. I hope if you guys were repotting at the same time that you got a lot done. Um, that's kind of the what I have in mind when I am making these longer videos It's just something you can put on and not have to worry about don't have to touch it for at least an hour Get some things done around the house and yeah, if you did like it Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps us a lot on YouTube Thank you to everyone who has been here from the beginning Thank you to all the new subscribers and I will see you in the next one